please subscribe to this channel and also turn on your notification bell in order to get the latest updates. Now to a story of corporate bribery and corruption. A UK fraud investigation covering five African countries has ordered the UK arm of Swiss commodities firm Glencore to pay more than $300 million in penalties for bribing officials in exchange for oil contracts in Africa. The court found that executives from the company carried millions in cash by private jet to get favourable deals in Nigeria, Cameroon, in Ivory Coast, Equatorial Guinea and in South Sudan. The Anglo-Swiss trader Glencoe was fined £276 million tellings, an equivalent of £162.7 billion francs CFA by the British courts on November 3rd after pleading guilty to acts of corruption in order to obtain contracts with oil companies in five African countries, including Cameroon. Corruption was clearly part of the culture of a number of staff in West African office. The charges represent a sophisticated offence that took place over extended periods of time measured in years, commented George Peter Fraser of South Rock Crown Court in London. Indeed, between 2007 and 2018, Glencoe and its subsidiaries admitted to justice last May that they had paid approximately $79.6 million in payment to intermediary companies in order to obtain undue advantages and maintain contracts with third parties, public and state control entities in selected African countries, Nigeria, Cameroon, Côte d'Ivoire, Equatorial Guinea and South Sudan. Glencoe had also confessed that it cancelled bribe payments by entering into bogus consultancy agreements, paying inflated bills and using intermediary companies to make corrupt payments to foreign officials. At the end of May, the Anglo-Swiss company had already been fined $1.1 billion in the USA. It sanctioned the establishment of a system of bribes to obtain oil exploration contracts in Latin America and Africa, including Cameroon and for manipulating the American fuel prices. As part of an investigation led by Britain's serious fraud office, a lawyer for the multinational already said on May 24 that the company would plead guilty to corrupt charges, including paying bribes to 7 billion francs CFA to encourage officials of the National Hydrocarbon Company, SNH, and the National Refinery Company, Sonara, to promote Glencoe's operations in Cameroon. Following these revelations, the SNH then reacted on May 30 via a press release to Glencoe's confessions of corruption by denying the facts. It is brought to the attention of the national and international public opinion that SNH is neither remotely nor closely associated with such practices, which are strictly prohibited by its internal regulations, declared the Administrator Director General ADC of the company. Adolf Mudiki nevertheless indicated that the American and English authorities were informed in order to provide the elements which would make it possible to establish the veracity of these allegations. The Administrator Director General also promised to inform the public opinion in due time of the response to the SNH request. But since the publication of that press release, nothing has been heard of. Barista Akeremuna, in the following interview with BBC, throws more light on the scandal and the question is who are those who collected the bribe in the African countries? Now to a story of corporate bribery and corruption. A UK fraud investigation covering five African countries has ordered the UK arm of Swiss commodities firm Glencore to pay more than $300 million in penalties for bribing officials in exchange for oil contracts in Africa. The court found that executives from the company carried millions in cash by private jet to get favourable deals in Nigeria, Cameroon, in Ivory Coast, Equatorial Guinea and in South Sudan. It's the first time in the UK that a company has been found guilty of authorising corruption rather than simply turning a blind eye to it. Akere Muna is a Cameroonian anti-corruption lawyer, former vice president of Transparency International and a member of the African Union high-level panel on illicit financial flows from Africa. Will this fine, I asked him, act as a deterrent to future corruption? From what I'm hearing, the, the, the full fine and the, uh, that, 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 that has been levied, you know, doesn't even uh, reach the amount of profits that Glencore makes in a week. So 
uh, as an African, you know, uh, who has been in this area for the past 20 odd years, I, it's a bit saddening because uh, it is, uh, I mean, in terms of the UK and the US, it's a simple violation of the law. And while in terms of Africa, we the victims, we don't get a dime about, out of it. And, and the fact that uh, our countries are not doing anything about it is even more saddening. These are uh, convictions in, involving five countries. How widespread is this sort of illegal activity, do you think? I think it, it, is, it is. I mean, as the judge said in court today, you know, to, to, it was part of Glencore's culture. And one can therefore guess that Glencore, which is one of the biggest commodity traders, that was his modus vivendi, and that's how he made his money. And to be the kind of wealth the company is today, and the extractive industry, you know, it's a, uh, is known to be uh, the the real uh, home for the the biggest corrupt practices. I mean, that is why the EITI initiative, which was promoted by uh, TI and actually brought into force, I think, by Tony Blair, it is uh, is very important from the point of view that uh, it causes tries to bring transparency into this. But you know. It is the 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 nature of the trade makes it very very amenable to uh, corrupt practices, and you know, I think it it will take two to tango. I mean, for example, in the present case of Glencore, it would have been very helpful if the British and American authorities would tell the countries, you know, the five countries you you you, you mentioned, who are those they paid? Because now the guys say they paid. The next question is, 